hello everyone you're welcome to my vivi creations channel so these are what i upload on this channel so today we'll be making a ball gown just want to show you how to achieve fullness on your ball dress okay so we'll be making this ball dress and also want to show you how to achieve inseam finishing like you can see even with your cap sleeve you still have a neat finishing like this one so now let's get started but before then just hit on the subscribe button below if you are yet to subscribe to this channel so i'll be making this dress for a ccs gold so i have here the main fabric for the upper part and my two for the lower part then i'll be using taffeta underneath the two then i also have my lining fabric here so right now i'll go ahead and cut the gown would be having a, a cap sleeve okay so i'll be showing you how to cut that so i'll first of all cut on the lining then transfer to the fabric so i folded my lining mat fabric so i made my starting point so just ignore this one this is the starting point this line so from this point now i'll place my the length i'll place the length of the bodies so the length is 10 inches but i'll add one inch 11 okay so that by the time I'm, I'm i'm done joining i can just trim it out so i'll make it 11 inches I'll also mark it here just to connect so this is the length of the bodies now the shoulder is 11 inches divide by 2 that is 5.5 .5. then I add half inch for joining the sleeve it will be with sleeve so that is six inches i'll mark at six inches then the neck width is three inches here's the neck width then the neck depth is also three inches so connect Then I'll come down by half inch for the shoulder slope. Here it is. Now connect it to the neck width. Then from the from the shoulder slope. I'll mark the armhole length. So the armhole length will be the same measurement I took at the the shoulder. Like six inches. So I have it here okay so at this point now i'll place the chest measurement so the chest is 26 divided by 2 that is 6.5 then i'll be adding one inch for ease that is 7.5 so this is it then i also mark the waist measurement the waist is 28 divided by 4 that is 7 plus 1 inch for each that is 8. here it is so connect it this is it so add one inch for seam allowance Using one inch, so 
so i have it here so now just mark out the arm the neckline and the armhole so just get the midpoint of the armhole which is three inches then i'll come in by half inch for the front armhole depth okay so i have it there so just connect this Also connect this. So this is my armhole. So for my neckline, I'll just mark my neckline. So here it is. So now I would cut. Okay. So I'll go ahead and cut it out. I would also add my shoulder seam allowance. So let me not forget that which is half inch for joining the shoulder I have it here so this is the front so I'll use it to cut the back so I'll be using this to cut the back so I've marked that one inch zipper allowance so I'll place this then the back armhole I'll come out by half an inch okay then for the neckline i want the back neckline to be one inch okay so this is the line so one inch the back neckline so that is it I also cut the the shoulder seam allowance okay then cut out every other thing so I have the back and front here. Now I would cut it out on the main fabric. Then I'll cut the sleeve. So now I want to cut the cap sleeve. So to cut my cap sleeve, I need the length of the sleeve and the round sleeve. So I'll be using five inches for the length of the sleeve. Okay. So as usual, I'll make a starting point. So from here, I'll mark five inches. So these five inches include the hem allowance. So let's see my calf slip will be four inches plus half inch for hem allowance. So that is five. So this is okay. Then the round sleeve is 12 inches, but I'll minus two inches from that because the sleeve won't get round the armhole. So I'll minus two inches from that. So that will be ten divided by two. That is five. So I'll mark at five inches. 
then I'll add half inch because I'll be joining it to the shoulder. It will be joining it to the bodies. Okay, so that is 5.5. Now from this point, I'll mark to I will just make a curve to that to this point here. So let me just mark it out. So from here now, I'll just make a curve. Let's gently make a curve to this point. Okay, so this is it. So I'll cut it out. This is my cap sleeve. So I have it here. So I'll cut two of this. So I'll cut two of it then. I'll then cut on the main fabric. So this is my sleeve so I'll cut it on my main fabric now so I'm going to make a notch at this top so this will be joined to the mid shoulder So I have it there. So now we are good to go. So we'll go ahead and join everything. So now we'll, be, we'll place the. So now we'll be joining. So we'll join the main fabric. Okay. We'll join at the shoulder. We'll join at the shoulder. The main fabric. Then the lining will do the same thing. So just join at the shoulder for the main fabric and also for the lining separately. So after joining at the shoulder, I would also join my sleeve. But before then, I would line up my sleeve. So I'll go ahead and line up my sleeve like so. So I'll place the lining on the right side of the sleeve. Then I would sew the down side of the sleeve the down part of the sleeve by the time i sew it i'll then turn it to the right side like so okay so i'll be sewing only the down with the lining so when i'm done doing that i'll then join it to the sleeve okay so by the time i have joined my sleeve at the shoulder the, my bodies at the shoulder then i'll join my sleeve like so okay so i'll join it but before then i would have lined it up so i'll do just that and you see it so i have joined it so you can see it so this is the main fabric and here is the sleeve okay so this is it now i would place the lining so the good side of the lining to the good side of the fabric so I'll just place it like so. Then I would sew the neckline. Okay. So now I'll sew the neckline. So by the time I'm done sewing, sewing the neckline, I would also show you how to sew the armhole side so that we'll conceal these edges of the sleeve. So just place it this way right side to right side then i'll go ahead and sew the neckline okay so that is it for now sew the neckline then i'll show you the next thing to do so i've sewn the neckline okay so the next thing now is to notch let's give it a notch so just notch it 
careful not to notch on your seam this is what you will do now we want to sew the armhole so we'll take away the sleeve that is we'll just conceal the now I want to sew the armhole so we'll just sandwich the sleeve in between the main fabric and the lining like so okay so you just want to get it away from the armhole so that you don't sew it together so i'll be using my pin to hold it down in there so i'll just hold it down with the pin then you bring this one like so here okay so i'll pin it down too so this is it so just push everything inside then i'll just pin it So make sure the sleeve is well pushed in so i don't sew on it when you're sewing so this is it just pin it down like so So I would also do same to this side. So I have it like this so I'll go ahead now and stitch so I'll also do the same thing to the other side then I'll show you how to tuck it how to pull it out okay so after sewing it this is what I have okay so now I would turn it okay so you can just take any side this is the back side I just pin the so this is the back side you just push it in push it in like so through the armhole just push it in then on this side you bring it out okay so you just pull it out gently so i have my pin holding my sleeve here so i'll remove it then i'll just pull it out and I have it here so you can see what we have here we have I have concealed the rough edges of the sleeve you can see how beautiful it is so do the same thing to this side just pull it that is just push it in you can see just push it in like so then on this other side you bring it out you can see it so while you're bringing it out you also remove the pin you're using to hold the sleeve down so this is it and i have it here very easy and very beautiful so the next thing is to give it a good press so i forgot to notch it so before turning it you have to notch it all around okay so i to relax at uh, this part so you have it relaxed so i didn't notch it but it's necessary you notch it 
so the next thing to do is just to give it a good press so that it relax okay so this is it and you can see the inner side you can see how neat it is okay so you make sure you give it a notch inside so it to relax and that is it so now the next thing is to close up the sides so this is what we'll do so i've turned it to the right side like so okay so i would sew right side to right side this is it that so i'll sew fabric to like the main fabric to main fabric and lining to lining like so like this then the lining to the lining so i took one inch seam allowance so that is what i will use to sew it in okay like so so this is the sides now do the same thing to this other side main fabric to main fabric and lining to lining so this is it so I'll just go ahead and stitch it then we'll prepare the lower part and also fix the zipper okay so after closing it up this is what I have inside so have it here so you can see how neat it is okay so now we we'll move to making the skirt part that's the lower part of the gown so now we'll give this a good press iron the neckline iron the sleeve everywhere so that it will lie neatly down then we'll open up this side give it a good press So open up and give it a good present trim out any uneven edge okay so that's why i usually take one inch extra so that by the time i finish joining you can trim out any uneven edge it usually happens so have it here yeah on the neckline so have our top so now we we'll make the down parts okay now to the skirt part i have my lining fabric i have the feta which will be under the two okay then i have my two so for my taffeta and the lining i would cut 180 degree flay okay now the length of my skirt would be the total length of the gown minus the length of the bodies okay so the total length of my gown is 30 inches and the length of my bodies is 10 inches so meaning that 30 minus 10 is 20 the skirt part will be 20 inches okay so but the taffeta will be one inch shorter than the two so the taffeta will be 19 inches the two will be 20 inches why the lining fabric would also be one inch shorter than the taffeta because the lining will be under the taffeta so it will be one inch so the lining will be 18 inches the taffeta will be 19 why the two will be 20 inches so you can use um satin under your two so it depends on what you want or what you have available you can use satin door face satin or any satin bridal satin so i'll go ahead and cut and i said i'll be cutting 180 degree flay so to cut your 180 degree flay so just assume that this is your fabric you fold it into two then you measure your radius so the radius is you would measure the waist the round waist of your bodies okay so the round waist divide by 3.14 so that will give you your radius 3.14 so the waist circumference divide by 3.14 would give you the 
radius so here my radius is 11 so 11 inches then plus the total length of my flay i want my flay to be 19 inches so 11 plus 19 that will be 30 so you fold your fabric on based on that is by 30 okay that is when you fold it you should have up to 30 inches here why this side too you should have up to 30 inches so what i'll do now i'll measure my radius which is 11 so i'll say this is where i have 11 so i'll measure it all through like so then i would connect okay so you just measure your radius all along the point from the this is where i folded the paper so from here you mark your radius and you connect then you also mark the length of your flay so wherever the length is you can mark from the top if you're marking from the top what you mark is 30 that is the radius plus the length of the flay so you can measure from there you mark your 30 or you just come from this radius you have already marked you measure the length of the flay how long you want it to be okay so you measure and you cut out okay so i hope this is clear so that is simply how to do it so i'll just go ahead and do this on my fabric so i'll start with my taffeta so it is on fold now i have folded it into two so by the time you fold it like this so from here now i'll measure my radius all around and cut it then I'll measure the length of my flay and cut it, okay? So I have my lining here, 180 degree flay. This is it. And my taffeta, okay? So don't mind the difference in color. It's just they are the same shades of color. They will still go. So this lining would even brighten up the taffeta. So that is why I'm using it like that so for the two i have four yards of two here and i folded it okay so i folded it on the four yards and uh, length okay this is the length of the taffeta which is 60 inches but the width okay is four yards so i folded it on that four yard i just folded okay so and one thing again is i'll make sure the edges are together because i'll be cutting out the length of my skirt so which is 20 inches and since i have 60 inches at the length i'll be having three 20 inches from this okay so by the time i measure and cut out 20 inches I'll cut again and I'll cut again. So I'll have three 20 inches here. So that will give me three layers of my two. So if you want to have more, you can, what it means is you just purchase more yards of the two. So you can make your gown full by having enough two, having so much two, or you use hard nets to support it. That is can can to support it under. Okay, so i have it here so i'll just arrange it very well then i'll measure out my 20 inches and cut so this is how i will do it so i'll measure 20 inches so this is my 20 inches okay so i'll mark it and cut it out So now I'll cut. So I'll place it again on this side, like so. So you can see this. So I'll place it like this to cut the second one. I 
have it here. So this one should be 20, but I'll still place it to see. So I have it there. So what I'll do is just to trim it. Okay. Just to trim it to have equal edges. And I have it here. So this is my two. So what I'll do now is to open it up and place it on each other. So I'll have three layers of my two. Then I'll be gathering this to the waist of my gown. Okay, so I'll just place the three together. Then I'll make a running stitch. So you can gather this either with your needle and thread or... You make a running stitch with your sewing machine and you pull it so this is what I have so if you want more layers what you do is to purchase more of the two so that is it so I have it here so I'll go ahead and make a running I'll make running stitch okay on the net as i've placed the three together i'll make running stitch then i'll gather it so that is it for the two now for the lining part i would also be attaching hard nets to give the gown a lift okay to make it a uh, full so i'll be attaching hard nets on it so i have my hard net here so what i'll do is this I would cut it. It should be shorter than the lining. So it should be about 1 to 2 inches shorter than the lining. Then I would also gather it. So I will make it very long. Longer than the width of the lining. About 2 times longer than the width of the lining. Then I will gather it also. So I will make a running stitch. So I will be using just one layer. So what I will do is to cut it and join. So it will be long. So I'm just showing you. So let me just cut it. Just showing you. So then I would gather it. When I gather it, also at the top of the flay, the lining, I would leave about one inch before I start sewing. Okay. And also when I've gotten to the end here, I'll leave about one inch or quarter of um, half an inch so that I can join the flay without the net being at that edge because we want the net to be within the lining so I don't touch the body of the child so that is it so but by the time I sew it you would see it okay so I'll go ahead and do that and also gather my two so I've sewn the net to the lining okay so this is the lining and then you can see how I sew the net to it. So and I've also attached the lining, the skirt of the lining to only the lining part. So I have the main fabric here. And this is what I have. Okay. So I'll still trim it a little bit so it will be shorter than the main lining. And on this other side, this is all I have. You can see how neat it is inside so now for my taffeta i've also hemmed it you can see how i hemmed it so when you want to hem a flay i don't want to use by yards and you want to have it neatly hemmed what you do you hem it two times okay instead of hemming or folding at once and hemming you might encounter some roughness what you do you first of all fold it once and so then you fold again and so and that is what i've done so that's how you can see two lines and at the end you have it neat like this so you can see that's having some folds and all that so having done this i've also gathered my net that's my two okay so i have it here so i used needle and thread to gather it so 
it makes it easier you can also use your sewing machine to do this okay so you just make a running stitch and you gather it so but i find it lots okay easier to use needle and thread that is when it comes to gathering it okay it helps you to have control over the gathers so now i would attach this to the taffeta so i'll have to gather it to fit in the waist of the flip so this is it so what i'll do is just to pin it just pin one end like so So by the time I pin this end here, then I will just start arranging it till I have it well fixed to the flay. So as I do this, I will adjust the, the gathers to fit in. So I will just pull it. But if it gets completely fixed to the flay, so I'm just pushing it a little bit so that it can get there. So another way too is also to pin this other end too. So you also pin this other end. Then you just adjust. Just adjust it to match up to the flay or match up with the flay. So I'm using just four yards, so it's, it's not that full. So if you want it very full, you can use even up to 10 yards okay, to achieve the fullness you want. So my mind is just 4 yards. So it's not going to be too full. But the hard net under will give it a little lift. So just arrange it. So by the time I'm done doing this, I'll just go ahead and stitch it to the flay. So I have it here. So you can see what I have here. You can see this. So I'll sew it. By the time I sew it to the taffeta, then I would attach it to the main bodies like so. Okay, so that will just be it. So the lining will be separate. This one will be separate. So I'll go ahead and sew it. Okay, so that is it. So you can see our dress. So I have sewn in the net, there's a hard net, okay, so depending on what you want, if you want it very full, you can make more pleats, that is having a lot of net, then you can also double it, so after one layer, you make another layer, so that is it, so like, so I'm just making do with what I have to see that I get something out of this, okay? Then, this is my taffeta and my two. So I have sewn the two to read. Then I also added belts. So like when I'm making belt dress for my kids, I, for my daughters, I love making it a bit bigger than their size. So because of that, I like adding belts so that when you tie the belt, you can tie it to fit. Okay, so you can tie it to fit them and um, that will give them, the belt to give fitting when you tie it at the back. So that is it. So but if you're making a, the exact waist measurement of a child, you might not need belt. So another 
reason for adding belt is just for you know beauty to also beautify it because you can use this to make bow at the back so i added just side belt unlike in my previous video where i made the belt from the front so this one is just side belt because i'll be embellishing the front with lace trimming okay so this is it so now the next thing is to add zipper to this bow dress so this is just how it is you can see it so it's a bit full so now i would add zipper to it and here is my zipper so i'll be attaching it to the main fabric okay just to the main fabric so i'm taking the lining part away for now so i'll attach it just to the main fabric so what i'll do is this i'll take three inches from the waist here i'll mark three inches so that is where the the zipper would stop then i'll close the down part i'll just close it up then i'll place my zip on the one inch zipper allowance i took so that is where i would sew my zip okay one inch zipper allowance or better still just place the edge of the zip at the edge of the dress like so then you sew close to the seat okay so that is it so by the time you turn it it would come out this way really i like using the overlapping method to fix zipper when i'm making ball dress for children but it doesn't really matter if as far as you're using the same color of zipper that is using a matching zipper matching color zipper it doesn't really matter if the zipper shows okay so the most important thing is just to have a matching color zipper so i'll be fixing it just like the invisible method so i'll be using the invisible method though it is not an invisible zipper but i'll be using the invisible method of fixing zipper not the overlapping method this time around so i'll just place it and i would sew okay so that is it so by the time i'm done sewing i'll now use the lining part so let me just go ahead and attach the zipper so i'll just hold it down with pin and remember where you have the beginning of the zip that is where you sew from so you can just fold in this one okay then you place it at the neckline like so then you hold it down with your pin So I'm just doing this to show you, okay? So by the time I'm done fixing, it will be like this. So, but before then, like I said, I would mark three inches from the waist down. Then I'll close it up. I'll close it down up. So that's where my zipper would stop, okay? So I'll just go ahead and do this and you see it. So I fixed the zipper. But now it is just at the main fabric alone. So I've not attached the lining part. So this is what I will do now to give it a neat finishing. So I'll just open it up. So this is my lining part. So what I'll do now, I'll just turn it over. You can see what I did over to the main fabric. Then I would sew it like so. I'll just sew it at this, you know, just close to the teeth of the zipper. So that I'll conceal these rough edges and have neat finishing inside. So that is what I'll do. So I'll sew it up to where I have the zipper, up to where the zipper stopped. So just sew it up to that part. Then I would close up the lining part separately. So you can see the main side. So by the time I've sewn the lining inside like this, then I'll close up the lining so that is just it just turn it you do on this side and the same thing you do to the other side so you also do the same thing on the other side okay so this is it 
so it's just like turning it over to the right side you sew this side like so then on this other side you do the same thing you do the same thing to it like so you sew okay so when i finish sewing it you see so after sewing it i'll then close up the lining parts so after sewing it up to where i have my zipper up to where i have my zipper then i'll close up the lining parts so and we'll be done with it then the what will be left is to embellish it okay so i'll show you that so you can see what we have inside now so i've concealed the rough edges of the zipper and this is it see how neat it is okay and this is the front so you can see so what is left now is to just give it a good press okay so let me turn it to the other side we have it here so our dress is ready so now i would embellish it so i have some lace trimmings here i have some lace trimmings okay these are cut out from lace so i'll be using it to embellish the dress so i'll be having this at the waist and i'll also be attaching at the other parts of the two also so you can see this so i can just drop at the lower part of the two so i'll just go ahead and do that and you see it okay so you can use whatever you like to embellish your ball dress so i'll just do this so i'll be using hot glue to do this i'm using hot glue because attaching it with needle and thread will take a lot of time so but when you use hot glue it will still stay okay so that that is what i'll be using so before gummy i've arranged it so that i'll see how it would look okay so I have it like this so I'll just pick it up I'll apply my hot glue Just place it. I would have just placed it only at the center, but I want it to stay on the dress without, you know going off easily So I'll just continue like this till I'm done fixing it. So when it's dried, the color of the glue will not show. So I'll just fix everything until I'm done fixing it. And I'll have it like this at the waistline. Then I'll also place at the other part of the dress. Okay. I might also place at the neckline. So I'll just check whatever that I find okay. That is what I would do just to add beauty to the dress. So just check it, whatever I feel is okay to me. 
I will do that. So you can embellish your dress in whichever way you like. So it's a matter of preference, okay? It's a matter of what you like. So I'll just check it and see. Okay? So I might decide not to place at the neckline. Whatever one. So let me just go ahead and continue. So I'm done attaching these ones. Now I'm attaching at the lower part. So what I did was just to arrange it with pin. Okay. So after arranging it with pin, I'm now using my hot glue to attach it. So I didn't arrange at the back. So this will just be just at the front. Because if I want to take it all around, the trimming will not be enough. So I'm just placing it only at the front. So I'm just doing it. I'll just place it there. So in case you don't have the hot glue gun, you can melt this with candle. Though it will not be fast, but you can still achieve what you want to achieve. So just on your candle light and you place it and melt it. Then another gum you can use is the B6000 gum. So you can make use of the B6000 gum to gum your trimmings to your dress. So but the best is the hot glue. It's faster and uh, actually easier to use. It's like this. So I also arranged at the center, just three. So I will also gum it there. So for the neckline, I didn't just want to leave it plain. And I didn't want to use this again. So I decided to use flat film. Okay, so you can see. So I'm still using my hot glue gum like my hot glue to attach this so this is what i do i just do the flat pin so i just apply the glue on it then I just place it and i have it there so you can also use your this is thousand to do this. All you need to do is just apply it on the flat pill, then you place it on the dress. So I'm using this to do it. So I might take it round or I'll just leave it at the front alone. I don't like spending so much time on one dress. So I'm, I'm just I'm done with this. Let me face another one. So I'm done with this and the dress is ready. This dress is ready. I just iron down the neckline at the back and that is just it. I'm not adding any more thing to the back. This is beautiful. You can see this. You can see the down. So for the back, I'll leave it just the way it is. I'm not taking any more time on this dress. This is just okay. Since I have this at the back, the belt will serve as the embellishment at the back. So just I'll tie it in form of a bow. And I'll have it there. Okay, this is just beautiful. 
so it's a relax when the little girl puts it on to relax at the back so this is it so thank you so much for watching do have a lovely time